Hello everyone. Welcome to the latest edition of the Hashi Stack. For those who haven't joined us before, this is where we go through a whistle stop tour of the the enterprise versions of um, HashiCorp's products, the four the four main ones, and then we kind of go through some highlights of what's what's happened since the last update. Try to do these on a six weekly basis. Um, what's been happening? So. For those who don't know me, my name's uh, JJ, John Jarvis. I'm a uh, certified HashiCorp implementation professional, as it says on the screen there, with um, Summerford Associates. So with that, let's dive in. So as I say, yeah, for those who aren't familiar with the HashiStack, we'll do, we'll do a quick, quick tour around the four main products. I should say there is an open source version of them as well, but um, yeah, some of the features that we'll be talking about are, are enterprise only. I'll try and highlight those when they come up. Um, and then we'll get into the highlights. This this time round, we're gonna be mostly focusing on um, HCP. Specifically, there's a new new package um, with HCP Vault. And uh, we'll talk about that. And there's been some more general improvements with the platform overall, including um, a new service, Packer, is in private beta right now, so we'll talk about that. And then, then we'll finish up. Vault itself has is um there's a new release, um 1.8. So we'll get into what what's the latest and greatest with Vault if you're running it yourself. And then I'll uh, give you a few links um, for further reading. Okay, so. The Hashi Stack is is the the name that we've kind of affectionately we the fans of the product and <laughs> the users of the product have given to um, HashiCorp's suite of tools and it's it's really a leading multi cloud adoption platform is the is the best way to think about it. So we're talking here about being you know provisioning, um, networking, um, platform orchestration, runtime environments, secrets management, all that stuff and when we're talking about it typically, and I've said this you know a few times now, the enterprise, we're talking about doing that at scale, right? It's um, enterprise grade, enterprise scale. And that's really where, um, where these products come into their own. So first up, we've got Terraform, which is probably, if you've heard of anything um, in this space, it will probably have met Terraform. So the, 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 the many acronyms with all of this, IAC is the one that um, is associated with Terraform, infrastructure as code. So we're talking about being able to reproduce infrastructure on demand, basically codifying your infrastructure um, and doing all the things that you can do with code, you know, um, version control, testing, all that stuff. Um, and it's composable as well, right? You can manage, um, you know, your existing with existing service providers, but also you can you can create your own, right? That's a that's a big part of the um, power of Terraform. You can make custom providers and um, build your own kit right alongside the all the all the other stuff and the other stuff. What's that? Well, that's anything you can think of really so the more common ones think of aws for example for um you know your infrastructure as a service or digital ocean but there's also platform as a service stuff like heroku for building and deploying applications and there's um you know software as a service you can you can um build github um, infrastructure as well for example or even coming on to it vault there's a, there's a provider for vault as well. So, yeah, so many um, providers in this ecosystem. What is vault, you say? Well, vault is about, we talked about in that um, overall slide, secret ma secrets management, and um, this is where vault really fits in, right? It's, it, it's protecting sensitive data. So it enables, you know, an organization to centrally um, store and uh, secure access to, and, and secrets generally, you know, means tokens, passwords, certificates, encryption keys, that kind of thing. 
Um, and the key to, to Vault as well is that um, it's, it's composable as well and is not concerned itself with identity. It's, it's trusting an external um, provider for that you are who you say you are. And then based on that, it's saying, well, this is, these are the authorizations that um, I have to go with it. This is what you're allowed to do for how long um, and in these scenarios. And of course, when we're talking about enterprise scale, we're talking about um, you know global reach, disaster recovery, multi-data center, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it, just to hammer it home on Vault. Keywords, dynamic, short-lived credentials that, that expire without any kind of um, you know, um, revocation process. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not it's not something that you have to actively go out and do. Vault will take care of all that itself, and and that's the other key feature. Dynamic automation is the other key word when you're thinking about Vault. You know, it's designed from machine to machine, service to service, um, and it's but it, and it's also um, able to facilitate human interactions. Yeah, when you think about most of the use cases with Vault, it's going to be machine to machine, and it's going to be you know orders of magnitude more than you would expect with um, any typical use cases involving humans and secrets. Okay, on to the next Nomad. So, with Nomad, what we're talking about is um, workload orchestration, and uh, the keys with with it are. It's simple and flexible while still being production grade and enterprise grade in the case of uh, Nomad Enterprise. Have I said that word enough lately? <laughs> um, so yes, it um, <clears throat> natively integrates with Terraform, as you would imagine, for infrastructure automation and, and with Vault for secrets management. Um, and console, we'll talk about that in a minute, for um, service discovery and for service mesh, so that it's to enable a unified infrastructure platform. Um, the elephant in the room whenever you're talking about orchestration, of course, is Kubernetes. Um, I've got a, there's, there's quite a few things actually, um, quite a few good write-ups on this. Um, I've, I've got a new one in, uh, in the, uh, for the, for further reading section on, um, how Nomad and, and Kubernetes can fit together in a, in a, you know, the, there's, there could be a symbiotic relationship there. Um. But if you're talking about them going head to head, really um, two of the core advantages of Nomad are um, simplicity in usage and um, maintainability, and it's flexibility to, to deploy and manage containerized and non-containerized applications. Those are kind of the two places where, where it, uh, it excels over the, um, the juggernaut that is Kubernetes. Um, yeah, and it's, so it can, it can supplement that. And many big corporations are doing just that now, running both of them. You know, it's it's a fact of, of today's environment that often um, no one's schedule or um, you know fills all their everyone's needs, basically, or you know everyone in in, in a single organization's needs. So yeah, those those workloads again can they can be on prem um, or legacy as well. So um, yeah, Nomad. Another thing about it is that it can cover um, a wider variety of use cases. Um, on a cloud adoption journey as well. So, you know, there, there, can, there may be good reasons to keep um, some applications on-prem, for example, and um, Nomad can seamlessly orchestrate those um, along with new services. So you can you can stand up your your cloud um, portion of your um, of your organization in, in slower time, I guess, is, is, uh, is the way to think about it. Um, yeah, you can take, uh, take your foot off the gas. <laughs> <laughs> as we'd say in North America. Petrol, John, petrol. Okay, last one for the whistle stop tour. That wasn't much of a whistle stop, actually. We, we spent some time there, didn't we? Um, but yeah, I, I like to kind of um, scene set versus um, Kubernetes when we're talking about Nomad. Okay, last one. Um, what do we mean by when we're talking about console? Well, um, in a nutshell, service-based networking, again, with the hashtag, it's all about automation. Um, so it's it's a platform 
uh, multi-cloud service network platform. Uh, and it allows you to connect and secure services across any runtime platform in public or private cloud. Um, and, it, and it enables uh, cloud networking automation with a central shared registry to discover, connect, and secure services across any runtime platform or cloud. Um, so whereas before you might have been thinking about securing endpoints, now you're abstracting up to services. It isn't, uh, you know, we believe this IP is good because it's assigned to this data center. And so we'll allow it through the firewall to the database server on our DMZ. Now it's, it's a case of the, the web service is allowed to talk to this database and it's doing so using credentials generated by our vault service. Uh, they're set to expire in 30 minutes and can be renewed for up to two hours, for example. So it's that kind of more, well, more dynamic scenario that um, is facilitated by console. It's kind of the glue for all of this. Okay, so that was a whistle stop tour. Hopefully you've got a, an idea now what we mean by the hashi stack. Um, what's changed? So talked about some improvements to um, the hashi cloud platform HCP, which I will call HPC at some point. And I apologize for that <laughs> in advance. Um, okay, so first up, we've got a new package. So um, HCP Vault was announced, what, in the spring? There were a couple of um, packages at that time. There was the development node where it was just kind of like, I want to I want to have a play with Vault and, and do some testing and understand um, if this is right for me. And then there was the actual um, standard cluster, which you could set up um, in such a way that you were build hourly or um, annually uh, to, to, to save a bit. HashiCorp got some feedback on that. That was basically those that's, we need something in between. And this is where um, HCP vault starter package comes in. So it is production grade, absolutely. Um, but it's designed to be um, a more modest scale basically. So we're talking about, you know, a three node cluster and um, the other key benefit, is, as you can imagine, would be it's it's going to reduce price price point. So, um, whereas the um, the standard package, it depended on how many nodes you wanted to run, but it could be anywhere from a um, dollar fifty US to seven fifty US per hour. Um, you're looking at a standard for this three node cluster of fifty cents per. Um, per hour. Apologies for the uh, <laughs> having to do the currency conversion in your head. But yeah, um, you know, significant savings there, I would, I would suggest. It's available in all the same regions that the uh, accompanied the original announcement. So uh, for our audience, um, Ireland and London are probably going to be the, the, um, the key ones that you're thinking of. And um, there's more to come on that, obviously, but this is this is where they've they've started with the, these further offerings, and um, we'll move on, sticking with HCP to. Apologies, while I get my notes. <laughs> um, the HCP Packer beta. We'll start with that. So it's it is a private beta at the moment. They are looking for beta testers, so please do sign up if you're um, if you're interested. Um, it's basically designed to fill a gap as, as so many of these things are, um, avid users and they, they providing lots of feedback, which is fantastic. And HashiCorp is listening. So in this case, it's, it's, um, the, the, the gap is, is, is one of automation where people are building images that they're then deploying probably with Terraform, um, but it, it's the it's the maintenance of those. It's the it's the, um, and and it and it can literally be the very bare bones maintenance. They, they even reference spreadsheets, for example. It's just, whew, okay. Um, <laughs> so now we're talking about a registry, basically the HCP Packer registry, 
This isn't Packer in the cloud at this point, but what the registry gives you is the ability to um, you know, track image dependencies, to track image equivalency if you're using the same template across different clouds, cloud infrastructure. And, and do this in such a way that you know, the development teams and the security teams can collaborate, basically, is, is the idea. And, and this is really just early days out of the gate stuff. So, well, as is, um, I guess, implicit in the private beta. Um, w one thing that I really wanted to highlight that I thought was quite cool, actually, was, um, well, a couple of things. Um, there's, a, there's a data source that you can use with with Terraform to uh, to in, to interact with all the stuff, which is which is obviously great. But there's also um, along with that um, release channels, which is pretty cool in terms of kind of you know pinning down and 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 uh, you know keeping keeping some predictability in the process, as um, I'm sure many. Terraform users will be familiar with this. The, this functionality has been extended into the um, to the image um, maintenance space, I guess you could say. So yeah, um, I definitely there's a whole separate um, talk basically, uh, and it, it can came off um, the keynote from HashiConf um, by Megan Marsh, who runs the team, and she's got a lot of energy. It's a really it's a really cool uh, little. Uh, talk and um kind of get an idea of where they're going with it um beyond this so um i'd certainly recommend it it's uh it's exciting to see where they're going to end up okay um so moving on onto the next bit there there's um one of the things that um was a bit clunky about um the the original um HTTP platform was that you had to manage all of these um, these VPC um, peering connections individually, right? And depending on how complex your environment was, that could get out of hand quite quickly. Well, they've now introduced functionality where you can you can attach to AWS Transit gateways, and and what that in in effect does is create um, more of a hub and spoke um, architecture. Um, you know, facilitating kind of a one-stop ingress egress um, point, you know, and then having all of your VPCs um, fanning out from that, if that makes sense. Much simpler to, to, to maintain um, and more secure, obviously, off the back of that. A few more things to, to just mention quickly. Again, um, uh, I'm going to say it at the end, but uh, certainly check out the, the the blog has all of these um, all of these announcements, so you can you can check out all the details on, on all this stuff. But um, yeah, Okta users will be will be happy that um, single sign-on is now supported with Okta um, on the HCP um, platform, and um, they've made a few improvements. There's a, there's a provider as well. There's always providers, isn't there? But um, HCP has a provider, and they've added a few new things to that as well. You can now create your um, um, vault cluster through the provider. You can create admin tokens through the provider, and you can. There's some more interrogation that you can do now of um, existing infrastructure. So that's pretty cool. Um, speaking of vault, actually, that's it's now. If you're in, if you are, um, you know, buying a a package now. The vault you'll be running is is 1.7. Um, that's an upgrade from when uh, when the platform was announced. That was it was based on uh, 1.6. So yeah, <laughs> all done for you. <laughs> upgrade to 1.7. Boom. Um, and of course, you know the the keen amongst you will have noticed that there's uh, there's there's more uh, vault news here. If you want to uh, get even more features, you can of course run vault yourself. And that is now 1.8. So what are we um, what are we looking at for new um, fresh off the press release, uh, features from from Vault? Well, um, first up, kind of cool, new command. Um, this is another one that there's a, I'm not going to go into too much detail. there, there is a whole separate talk. Um, on, on from the team that 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 made it uh, um, around the reasoning for it, what's going on behind the scenes, 
really worth um, taking in, I think, because um, particularly if you're in the space of, um, you know, setting up or onboarding regularly with um, with Vault, you, well, you probably already know that um, you've already experienced the pain of it, just it not working and um, not being clear about why it's not working. Well, with Diagnose, what's, what the idea is basically is that it's going to run through A, it's going to run through your config and kind of, you know, point out some things that, that may be problematic. But that's not the only thing it's doing. It's actually going to be trialing connections as well and making sure that resources um, are, are available and in a state that's expected, you know, in terms of um, the security and whatnot. So um, it's it's quite a it's quite a a thorough <laughs> diagnosis, um, and uh, yeah, I think I think it'll be quite useful. Something I'm I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to getting more expertise in, and uh, very much needed I think for all of the the troubleshooting that we've done. <laughs> Us fans of Vault. Okay, so up next. Um, Integrated storage, there's been, so with 1.7, we had um, Autopilot now coming up and, you know, kind of feature parity with um, the console back end. And um, now what we're looking to again now in the enterprise version is when you're talking about, you know, DR disaster recovery clusters, you can actually um, configure that Autopilot independently of the primary, um, of primary cluster. So it's uh, it's giving you a little bit more um, control in that in that space to make sure that it's a it's a smooth transition um, when things go wrong. <laughs> um, you know, K KMS was um, in uh, was beta in uh, one point seven, and uh, that's GA now as well. So um, support for AWS KMS. Again, enterprise feature there. I know um, this one in particular, I, I've seen a lot of in the um, in the support forums, hash support forums. Um, people having problems with um, leases lingering and, and not able to clean them up and things. Um, I think these improvements are a direct result of um, of that and it sounds like a, a really neat feature so we're talking about um, you know automatically cleaning up old leases but also giving you some control on the command line over um, over how to do um, to, to to manage these leases as well so um, definitely something to, to to check out if you're um, if you're a vault administrator listening to this um, Feature that had been introduced before, um, control group triggers. They were they were a bit um, a bit too broad. Basically, there were too many. Um, some people were were saying that there were too many um, scenarios in which it, they were firing up for um, requiring approval and things like that. So it's more nuanced now. Basically, the triggers have been uh, have been improved so that you can really um, target in on what specifically your which operations it is that you're concerned about. And not absolutely flood your uh, <laughs> approvers with requests. Um, and finally, there's been um, some more uh, user interface updates. As as you'll no doubt be aware if you've been following this, the Vault um, team have put a humongous amount of effort into the UI um, in this last let's say this last year, and it continues now. Um, there's been so the UI now supports. Um, <clears throat> MS SQL, my um, Microsoft uh, SQL Server, and uh, MySQL Server. So in the, in the UI, I mean, it was always obviously supported in, not always, but it has been supported in the database secrets engine for a while now, but now that can be configured through the UI as well. So that 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 particular section of the UI, if you haven't um, played around with it recently, has changed a lot, the database secrets engine. So definitely check that out, because that's a, obviously a key secrets engine. Okay, so that pretty much covers um, the updates that I wanted to give today. Hopefully that's been um, been of use. As I say, um, the blog, I, I, I can't 
praise the blog enough. I absolutely um, love it. It's great, updated all the time, really useful information, but also concise. Um, products and technology is a section you're gonna to wanna to go to and all of the things that we've talked about today have their own separate page, own, own separate post on that. So do check that out if, um, if you're looking to um, use any of these products. Um, I talked about Kubernetes and Nomad. So there's been a new post um, fairly recently and it kind of um, sets the scene um, in terms of you know Kubernetes secrets and uh, the limitations of those and where Vault can come in with, with integrations and where, where Nomad can play a role in that as well. So I definitely recommend that um, just to kind of give you a better flavor for what um, where those synergies were. <laughs> Don't necessarily like using that word, but I think it actually fits in this case. Um, and um, yeah, from there you should be able to go on to other things too, where it's um, where it's kind of talking about. Uh, there's this graphic I just love, where it's it's talking. It's got you know the spectrum basically, and where it so you can kind of orient yourself on where you sit in the spectrum, and where and and and, and as a result, what makes more sense in terms of using Kubernetes or Nomad. It's um, it's really clear for. Uh, you know, someone who's, who's only been in the space for a couple of years um, and getting up to speed, it, it, it helped me a lot, basically. Kubernetes is complex. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be quiet now and let you get on with your uh, your day. Thanks very much for your uh, time and attention. Email address is there. We've got a YouTube channel, which is probably how you're seeing this now. But um, do get in touch. Any questions? We're, some refer to very much about advice this is this is a complex space and it's um of course not just um the hashi stack we are uh you know a, a security and an observability um outfit as well right we've got a whole suite of tools um i'm a splunk architect so yeah reach out if you've got any questions <laughs>